There are some mistakes that you make that are fairly easy to recover from, but there are others that can cause long-lasting and near-permanent damage. And that's the way it is with Social Security if you miss just a few things. So today, I want to share the five most common mistakes that I see individuals making. And some of these, I'm telling you, can have devastating results. But before we get there, I've told all of you in the past about a new service we started offering where my team can help you with clear direction on how and when to file for Social Security. Once we opened this up, the doors were just blown off and we had to shut it down for a little while just to get caught up. But now it's open again. So if you're planning to file for Social Security at some point in the next few years and you want to make sure that you get all of the benefits you deserve, you need to realize you only get one chance to make a good decision. So it's very clear that you need to get professional help before you file. My team of registered Social Security analysts can help you build a plan that cuts through all the complexity, and gives you clear direction on your filing strategy. You can get started with a free 15-minute consultation where they'll listen to your unique situation and let you know how our plan can help you maximize your Social Security benefits. There's a link in the description where you can get started today and schedule your call. You know, one of the things I tell my kids all the time is that big doors swing on little hinges. And that just means that small, seemingly inconsequential decisions can often have very large consequences. Now, that's not only true for life, but it's true for retirement planning, too. And within retirement planning, it's absolutely true for Social Security. Some small decisions that you make today can come back and have disastrous effects later, especially if the income that you're receiving off of Social Security is very important to your retirement income plan. So here are the five things that you need to watch out for to keep this Social Security mistake from devastating your Social Security plan. Number one, getting yourself into a situation that results in an overpayment. Down in the comments below, if you've ever received an overpayment notice, I'd like to hear your story. Tell us why you were overpaid and how you were able to resolve it. This will be helpful because many people have never heard of an overpayment letter until they receive one in their mailbox addressed to them. When I hear from people who have received one of these, they'll usually say something like, Devin, surely this isn't correct. I mean, why would they overpay me? They are the ones who did the calculations. Don't they understand their own rules? Well, unfortunately, it happens, and it happens more often than you may think. You open the mail one day, and there's the letter. In this letter, they tell you that you've been overpaid, and you need to pay back these benefits, or they'll stop your monthly benefit payment until the amount you owe them has been collected. Now, by the time you receive one of these notices, it's really hard to go back and piece together what actually happened in a given year because it could be years down the road when you receive this notice. So let me assure you, you want to steer clear of anything that could potentially trigger one of these notices. And there's one reason that I've seen these overpayments happen more than any other reason. And that's the Social Security earnings limit. What I've seen time and time again is that the Social Security Administration doesn't always ask the right questions when they're taking your application. Sometimes they do, but you may misunderstand them, or they may misunderstand your response. But for whatever reason, it happens quite often that someone less than full retirement age, making more than the income limit, starts to receive benefits. And they think it's okay. I can understand why, too. If the Social Security Administration is sending them a benefit check, then surely the administration has reviewed the eligibility for that check. But that's not always the case. But the Social Security Administration will catch up to this in an audit procedure, and they will send you a notice of overpayment. So I'm going to link two articles down below in the description that goes along with this. One is what to do if you're already receiving a notice of overpayment. There's a step-by-step -step guide that's going to help you walk through that process. And the other is on the Social Security income limit. And this is going to tell you how much you can earn and tell you how to get around some of those things as you age as well. And now for mistake number two messing up spousal or survivor benefits. I've had more than one client tell me, Devin, I'm going to wait until I'm 70 to file for my spousal benefits so they'll increase. Here's what you need to know. If a spousal benefit or a survivor benefit is the highest benefit that you're entitled to, there is no need to wait beyond your full retirement age because they will not increase. 
Now, your own benefit from your work that you performed will continue to increase after your full retirement age. It'll increase by two thirds of 1% per month that you delay or 8% per year. However, spousal or survivor benefits will not do that. The other big mistake that's within survivor benefits is waiting too long. And I'm not talking about beyond full retirement age here. If you have a spouse that's deceased, let's say that they filed at the earliest age possible, it may not be worth it for you to delay filing beyond 62 years and four months. Now, there's a lot of detail that we need to go into for this. We just don't have time for that in this video. So I'm going to link up an article where we talk about that down in the description. But it comes back to the widow's cap or widow's limit. If your spouse filed early, you are limited to the amount that you can draw to whatever they were receiving or 82.5% of their benefit. So for those spouses who filed early before dying, if you're the survivor and you wait until full retirement age to claim a survivor benefit, in an effort to get a higher benefit, you just miss several years because that benefit isn't actually going to increase beyond that widow's limit. The other mistake that's also related to survivor benefits is not recognizing that the restricted application strategy is still available for survivor benefits. That means that you can file for a survivor benefit as early as age 60, provided, of course, that you don't have earnings in excess of the limit, and delay your own benefit till 70. For some people, this means that you can receive a much higher benefit at 70 than you would have. And now for big mistake number three, not checking your earnings record. So how confident are you that your Social Security earnings record is really accurate? Unless you've checked it just recently, you shouldn't be too confident that it is. Since the inception of Social Security, there's been more than 1.2 trillion, the T, added to the earnings suspense file. Now, that's where the earnings go if they can't match those up to an individual's earnings record. And in 2012 alone, there was $71 billion that they couldn't match. Now, this happens for a variety of different reasons. It could be that your Social Security digit is off on your wage reports, and there's a few other things that could happen too, but the result is that you get a zero in that year that they can't match up. So on an annual basis, you need to download your earnings history. You need to make sure that those earnings records are accurate and up-to-date. The reason is that your benefit is calculated based on your high 35 years of earnings, and if you have a zero in those high 35 that's going to be included as well, and it's going to bring down your average. So make sure you go back and check that. They are much more common than you may think they are. And now for mistake number four, not calculating the tax. So there's a bit of sticker shock that goes in with Social Security taxes when some people retire. They may think, hey, Devin, I paid a tax on this to get into the system, and now to get money out of it, I've got to pay tax on it again. That just doesn't make sense. Well. You may or may not have to pay tax on your benefits. It's dependent on a number of factors, but basically between 0% and 85% of your Social Security benefit can be subject to taxation. And it'll be taxed just like distributions from your 401k, your pension, and a number of other things that consist of ordinary income. The way that they determine whether or not this is taxable is a formula called combined income. Now, I'm going to link up a description below, which is a uh, video that I released that talks about how to calculate this combined income. And you really need to get in there and figure out, based on the distributions that you're going to have from a variety of income sources, to see how much of your benefit will be taxable. Now, that video certainly shouldn't be taken as individual tax advice, so really ought to check with your tax advisor. But you can avoid the surprise of finding out that nearly 20% of your benefit gets taken away in taxes. And now big mistake number five, relying on the Social Security Administration for advice. You know, I've heard horror stories of clients coming in or calling me saying, Devin, this is the advice I received from the Social Security Administration several years ago. It was wrong the entire time, and that means that I've missed benefits that I could have been receiving. I've heard that over and over and over. Here's the thing. The technicians at the Social Security Administration are just not equipped to be advisors. They understand the rules, but they don't understand all of the other factors that you have in your financial life that impact how and when you should file for benefits. So don't take advice from the Social Security Administration. Get information from them, 
but not advice. If you need hardcore proof, check this out. The Office of the Inspector General did a survey just on survivor benefits. So not spousal benefits and not retirement benefits going to individuals based on their own work records, just survivor benefits. And they found that in their sample, there were 9,224 individuals that had been underpaid by a total of around $131 million. And that's because of the advice they'd received from the Social Security Administration. So those are individuals that went in and said, how should I file? And a helpful technician told them, and they were wrong. So don't rely on the Social Security Administration as your source of advice. It could be hazardous to the health of your retirement plan if you do. Now, there are a few places that you can get help if you need individualized advice on building a retirement plan that includes Social Security. Some financial planners can help you. I'm really, really thankful to see that there are some financial planners out there who have become really knowledgeable on the program. Not all are up to speed, though. What you'll see some doing is offering to do an analysis for you and then using a software program. Now, this works great for some people, but let me tell you, you have a lot of moving parts in your retirement. You've got to look at the bigger picture. For example, I found that there is a certain threshold for the type of plan you have built for retirement has to change. And this threshold is generally based on the amount you have saved for retirement. The reason for this is that once you reach a certain asset level, the planning becomes more interrelated. How you file for Social Security affects how much you have to pull from your retirement accounts, which affects how large your future required minimum distributions will be, which affects your tax bill in retirement, which affects your retirement spending needs. That's just a small example of how interwoven this decision is. If you don't have significant savings, a software analysis that's isolated and considers Social Security alone probably work just fine and could likely end up suggesting a filing strategy that results in more lifetime benefits. But either way, you need a plan. And when you use my team of registered Social Security analysts, the initial questionnaire will automatically assign you to the team who can offer you the service you need for your situation. So down below in the description, there's a link where you can get started with your personalized plan. Now, there's no charge for the initial consultation. And if you decide to move forward with a plan, the fees are transparent and they're fair for everyone. So take that step, go down and click that link and get started today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.